Bloomberg News. We're joined by Mark Faber, editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report. Uh, Mark, before we get into the markets, uh, you're in Thailand. We have reports of 70 people injured as police fired tear gas into a crowd of demonstrators. Can you bring us up to date on the situation there? Well, basically, we have... Uh kind of a civil strife with essentially the red shirts, which are followers of the former and now ousted Prime Minister Taksin, that essentially want democracy, which means a vote for each person in Thailand. And on the other hand, you have the so-called yellow shirts that are largely representative of the Bangkok elite and aristocracy. And I don't see any solution. I don't think that the current demonstrations are terribly serious. But uh, I think that uh, the two parties will not agree on anything for a long time to come. And that has a negative impact on business and in particular on tourism. Well, there have been, what, four governments in the past three years? Yes, uh, that's exactly the problem, that one government comes in and the opposition starts to demonstrate, and then another government comes in and then the other party starts to demonstrate. So I don't see any near-term solution to that. And I think it could get worse and possibly quite unpleasant if, say, the former prime minister, who is now in exile, uh, Thaksin, came back to Thailand because I suppose that the police force and the army is also split, that some people in the army are on the side of Mr. Thaksin and some people are on the side of the present government. Now, the, the Thailand's currency, the baht, is down to the lowest level this month. Uh, from what you're saying here, it indicates that uh, that's going to keep falling. Well, I'm not sure that the Thai baht will go down that much more because it's already relatively low, and the country has actually a trade and current account surplus because the imports fell off the cliff. So, on the one hand, you could say that the Thai baht is a fundamentally not all that bad. On the other hand, obviously... Uh, the current political situation means that less foreigners will invest in the country and that portfolio managers may actually be sellers of equity. Mark, we were talking about the bot, the Thai currency falling to the lowest level this month. Uh, is there any chance that Thailand is going to uh, infect the rest of the region and trigger another Asian financial crisis? No, I don't think so, because uh, the Asian countries are in a far better financial position than they were in 1997, when most of them had large current account deficits. But I'm concerned about Thailand itself, because as I mentioned before, I don't see a solution to the political and civil unrest we have at the present time. Well, Thailand aside, when you look uh, at the U.S. markets, what do you see? Well, I had an interview with Bloomberg on March 6th, and I forecasted at the time a rally. And since then, we've rallied more than 25% on the S&P and more than 30% on the Russell 2000 index. And overseas, we had very strong rallies in emerging economies. Now, the markets very near term have become somewhat overbought and the correction should essentially follow. But I doubt we'll go and make new lows in the intermediate future. I think the lows in early March at 666 on the S&P will hold, and that we have another push-up into July for the simple reason that the economic news is not good, but it will not deteriorate at a much faster pace then when the economy collapsed and fell off a cliff between September and February of this year. So is what we're seeing here an actual bull market, or is it just a bear market rally? Well, I mean, it's difficult to define bull markets and bear market rallies. I mean, if you have a rally of 25%, you could say, well, that's kind of a bull market. If you define a bear market rally as a rally that lifts, 
prices, but not to their previous highs, or exceeds the previous highs, but as a yes, we're in a bear market rally. But that doesn't mean that this rally cannot go from, say, bottom 666 on the S&P to, say, possibly around 1,000 before we drift again. So my view is that investors have to take essentially day by day at a time or month by month And it is futile to argue how the economy will be in a year's time. I think there will be some kind of an improvement, but not much, and that the level of economic growth and synchronized uh, global boom we had in 2006 and early 2007, that isn't going to come back anytime soon. Well, Mark, if you have uh, cash to put to work, where do you put it then? Well, I mean, I would say right now I still like some commodities. I think they can rebound. And I think that financial stocks, essentially the financial stocks are the worst performers over the last 18 months to two years. And they really got hammered. Now you have essentially a government that gives financials free money at the expense of the taxpayer, of course. And with this free money, they may actually have decent earnings in the near future. So I think that financials could actually rebound somewhat more. They have already rebounded, but they can rebound somewhat more. If you have a city group that drops from $57 to less than one, it can easily rebound to five or even 10 before it drifts down again and possibly goes to zero. Mark Faber, editor and publisher of the Gloom, Boom, and Doom Report, online at www.gloomboomdoom.com. Find more Bloomberg podcasts on your Bloomberg terminal and on the web at Bloomberg.com and iTunes. Listen to.